summer's over, the schools are back, and for the first time in weeks and weeks, there isn't someone in red, white and blue trying to win a medal on the telly. But here was one last chance to bunk off work and play hooky. Of course, there was a lot more to the victory parade than that, for the 800 athletes who took part in it, for the volunteer games makers, and for a great many who turned out to line the route through central London. When Britain won the Games, we, or at least the government, promised to make the country a world leader in sport, to transform the East End of London and to inspire a generation of young people. They also said they'd make the Olympic Park a model for sustainable living and show that the UK is a creative, inclusive and welcoming place to live, visit and do business. So how's that been going then? Is it true, as some maintain, that this summer of sport marks a sea change in our attitudes? You have noticed the change in people's attitudes over the last um, summer. So, me personally, I would like to see that continue. It, Are you nice to other people? I'm always nice to be, um, always nice to other people. I've been raised to be that way. Now, I like your look. Are they from Specsavers or not? <laughs> they should be, shouldn't they? <laughs> Maybe they should. They should. <laughs> now, do you think this is a big turning point in the country? Do you think we're all... I do hope you? so, yes. Really? Yes. Because people have got short memories, though, haven't they? Yes. Yes, I'm afraid when I was at the station coming this morning, people were, instead of thanking us, were sort of going, oh, how embarrassing. <laughs> and some people are talking a bit fancifully about this being a sea change in the country. Well, well all time. But is it true? Well, it's up to the media to report positive news instead of negative Shoot stuff. Shoot the messenger all the already. No, but you could report positive stuff as well as negative stuff. And we'd all be happier. Well be realistic about things. Within 10 minutes of being in the stadium, you weren't looking at, you know, disabled athletes, you were just looking at athletes. Uh, and, um, you know, I sort of feel that that's kind of carried on, you know, I sort of, you sort of, you're, you're more aware of people with disabilities at the moment because it's, you know, in the press, but in a, in a sort of positive way, you know, you just kind of glance at someone in a wheelchair and you almost think it's sort of cool, you know, and that's a bit, kind of a bit weird. The Mayor of London credited the GB athletes with uniting the country and making the host city a friendlier place. This was your achievement. You, you brought this country together in a way we never expected. You routed the doubters and you scattered the gloomsters and for the first time in living memory you caused tube train passengers to break into spontaneous conversation with their neighbours about subjects other about subjects other than their trod on toes. Well, that all seemed to go rather well, didn't it? But will there be a long and lasting legacy, the L word? I've been speaking to somebody who's had a very prominent role during this summer of sport. Ever since the dawn of civilization, People have craved for an understanding of the underlying order of the world. Why Professor Stephen Hawking was an inspired and inspirational booking for the opening night of the Paralympics. Newsnight met him on the roof of his office at Cambridge University as the games were drawing to a close. Any more books in the offing? Maybe. Yes. Good. I began by asking him about society's view of people with disabilities and if the Paralympics had made a difference. Disability used to be regarded as a sign of a curse by God. It was shameful and to be hidden away. This is still the attitude in many countries, but I'm glad to say that in Western Europe and America, People have come to realize that the disabled are normal people who just happen to have certain special difficulties. The great success of the Paralympics has shown that disabled athletes are just like any other athletes and should lead to disabled people being accepted as full members of society. Do you think this country is becoming better or worse for people with disability to live in? This country is now much better 
for disabled people than it used to be. Buildings to which the public have access now have lifts and disabled toilets, and the curb has been lowered in many places. This country is not yet as good for disabled people as the United States, but it is improving. The Paralympics has been a rare platform for showing what people with disability can do and what science and technology can do for them. I believe science should do everything possible to prevent or cure disability. No one wants to be disabled if it can be avoided. You weren't expected to live very long with your condition. Uh, is there one single thing you think that has helped you more than anything else to enjoy the life that you have had? I was diagnosed with motor neuron disease at the age of 21. This is a condition for which there is as yet no cure and which usually kills its victims in two or three years. That I'm still alive at the age of 70 is due in large part to the excellent care I have received. It has also helped that I have been successful in my scientific career. This has kept me active, and I travel a lot although I'm almost paralyzed. I hope my example will give encouragement and hope to others in similar situations. Never give up.